Ford today at 973-202-2103. Planet Networks. Our high-speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable and up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down if you speak NERD. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks. So fast, it's worth the wait. Blue Nail was superior in almost every aspect. We worked with contractors for almost everything in the firehouse, and Blue Nail really made us feel comfortable all the way through, from the contract to pre-planning to scheduling, getting the job done. We are thrilled that they were able to do the job for us. Majestic Flowers and Gifts, your trusted family-owned and operated florist since 2006. Our loyal customers are always satisfied with our attention to detail and customer service. We serve all of Morris County and offer deliveries for any flower needs. Providing our customers with a variety of flowers from prom flowers to anniversary arrangements, wedding centerpieces, get well soon flowers, funeral flowers, and much more. Next time you're thinking of getting flowers for your loved ones and special occasions, rely on Majestic Flowers and Gifts to provide nothing but the highest quality. Choosing a college is a big, big, big deal. But I know I started right, because CCMs are the top 2% of community colleges in the nation. And at County College of Morris, I get to choose over 100 programs. Whether you're just out of high school, like me, exploring career options, like me, or seeking lifelong learning, like me, make CCM your choice, like me. Go big and visit ccm.edu and aspire to be you. Cortez Disposal is a leader in the solid waste industry. We offer dumpster roll-off containers for residential, commercial, and industrial needs all over New Jersey. We are women-owned and family-operated. Cortez Disposal, where where your your garbage garbage is is our life. We specialize in roofing and siding. That includes gutters, windows, doors, stone siding, decks, and painting. We also utilize new age technology like drones and 3D modeling. The drones keep our guys safe on the ground with an aerial perspective, and the 3D modeling gives us exact measurements for precise job scope. Give us a call today. We'll be happy to provide you with a complimentary drone inspection. We look forward to keeping your home and your family safe. At Paint Perine, we don't just sell paint and paint accessories. We eat, sleep, and breathe it. Not actually, though. That would be weird. With our huge selection of incredible Benjamin Moore paints, choosing the right color and finish can be a big decision. Luckily, with over 40 years of experience, we can answer any question you have. Whether you're a seasoned contractor or a DIYer, we have all the tools you need to get the job done right the first time. Ready for your next project? Visit us at Paint Paris or shop online at paintparis.com. Athletic Fields of America. And your 2023 Panther Royalty, Haley Clark and Robert Mahalo.
synthetic turf. Serving the greater New York, New Jersey, and Eastern PA regions, we have delivered hundreds of both synthetic turf and natural grass sports fields for youth and recreational levels all the way up to the highest standards and requirements of the NCAA. Our goal with every project is to provide our customers with exceptional workmanship, extraordinary service, and professional integrity while constructing a superior product that you can enjoy for years to come. Visit athleticfieldsofamerica.com. This game is brought to you by Aaron Mizzarelli of State Farm in Randolph. My licensed and experienced team members are here to serve you for all of your insurance and financial service needs in New Jersey and New York. We offer excellent customer service and our office is conveniently located in Randolph, New Jersey. For a free auto, home, life, or business quote, visit us at AaronMizzarelli.com or call us at 973-389-9999. At Stuber Insurance Agency, we work diligently to make sure you get the right insurance for you, your family, and your employees. Within our carefully selected group of financially sound insurance companies, our goal is to find you the best coverage at the most competitive prices. Visit us online to request a quote or make an appointment at 115 Mill Street in Hackettstown. Shop and service at your most trusted local Ford dealership serving Morris, Sussex, and all of New Jersey. Come experience why so many people buy and service from us over and over again. Our sales and service department make you feel at home, and there's never any pressure. Maplecrest Ford of Mendham is here for all your vehicle needs. For sales and service, call 888-797-7003 or go to maplecrestford.com. Montella Inc. is a family-owned dumpster rental business located in Stanhope, New Jersey that's been around since 1984. We provide prompt, quality service at a reasonable price for our New Jersey customers, whom we consider our family. We don't just take out the trash. Montella Inc. is a full-service waste management company servicing demolition sites, construction projects, factory sites, shopping centers, commercial businesses, and homeowners. Call today at 973-927-2232. If you live in Andover, Blairstown, Byram, Frankfurt, Franklin, Frieden, Freelingheisen, Green, Hampton, Hardwick, Hope, Knowlton, Lafayette, Newton, Sparta, Stillwater, Sussex, and Wantage. 
Planet Networks is building high-speed fiber in your neighborhood. Visit GetPlanetFiber.com today to learn more. Contact Mary Comito for an auto quote today. WISC gives me the freedom to be entrepreneurial, innovative. I feel supported to bring 100% of myself and my personality to work each and every day. I'm the CEO of WISC Family Office. I have two amazing children. I'm the daughter of French and Italian immigrants. Above all, I'm someone who derives strength and confidence from my ability to connect with others, and I strive to make a difference in their lives. Attention homeowners, get ready to meet Brandy Brosian of Compass Real Estate. Brandy wants to sell your home with ease and maximize your return on investment, providing a personalized approach that includes deep cleaning to staging to professional digital exposure. Brandy's innovative approach provides so much added value that you and your home will feel the VIP difference. Don't wait another day. Reach out to Brandy Brosian today. And welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to more Sussex Sports here from Bridgewater, New Jersey, or some would even say Somerset, New Jersey. Welcome in, everyone. My name is Lloyd Wilson. For this matchup, Friday Night Lights today as the Bridgewater Rounder Panthers host the Minutemen, Elizabeth the Minutemen, both teams coming into this one on a season where they're just trying to finish it out strong. Both teams coming into this one, one and six. First for the away team for the Minutemen that are on the field, still waiting for the Panthers to have their run out. Then they come in this one, one and six with John Fiore as their head coach, one and three in the big Central American goal. Players to watch in this game. The freshman, Enrique Fleming, throwing over a thousand yards, close to 1,200 this season, along with his touchdowns being at nine and his interceptions being at six. He could get double digit touchdowns tonight. On the offensive end as well, Nyrese McDow uh, McDougall rather, coming in this one, the senior with 257 yards along with two touchdowns. His, his best game so far, having 131 yards on the ground. Now for the offensive end for the receivers, Ibn McDaniels coming in this one with 592 yards catching through the air along with four touchdowns. His best game so far this year came with 100 and 84 yards also some receivers to watch out for today uh, along with um, Ibby McDaniels with 34 catches and Maude Canty with 16 catches with two touchdowns along and lastly Najee Smith the freshman receiver with a touchdown and 193 yards as well now for the defense Davian, da uh, Davian Davis rather with two sacks playing the tight end position as well as that D line inside the middle and also Ibn McDaniels playing that DP position with two interceptions as well. Now we switch sides to the home team as they are awaiting to come out. This is the last, the, uh, this is the last time, last time we were out here for more Sussex Sports. I was on that game last week when they faced a tough team in Phillipsburg. I almost said Glen Ridge. I was also in the game as well. But for Glen Ridge, they faced a tough Glen Ridge team where they were able to spoil the Panthers senior night, winning that one 42 to 19. However, for the Panthers, they come back home trying to get back in the winning column coming in, coming into this one again, one and six, as we see them now gathered up in the end zone. Players to watch in this one first with the offense. Jack Bray, the senior, he He's throwing over 1,200 yards, so both quarterbacks know how to sling the football as the Panthers run out with the flag as well as the American flag. Jack Ray knows how to swing it, throwing over 1,000 yards with 16 touchdowns and seven interceptions on the season. He did throw a pick six last week against Phillipsburg. Doesn't want to have that same kind of reaction or rather that same kind of recipe happening today. Players to watch also on the offensive end. 
we have David Goldberg coming in this one with 53 carries, 229 yards, and a touchdown. And Dane Swanson, who made some tough catches, and a nice wide receiver screen that went almost 45 to 50 yards last week against Phillipsburg. So he's definitely a threat to watch out in that backfield. They use him in as a rotational player in the backfield as well as in the slot position. He comes in this one with 18 catches, almost 200 yards, three yards shy of that, and two touchdowns. Now for the defensive end, Chris DeLosantro coming in this one, the junior D tackle with three sacks on the season and also at the DB position, Colin Woodring, who also had a nice play last week against Phillipsburg. He comes into this one with one interception. We'll have to see how this D line is able to stop this offense for the Minutemen. Next time we come back on the air, kickoff awaits here from Somerset, New Jersey. The Panthers and the Minutemen coming up here on more Sussex Sports. Number 13. You know that safe medication disposal not only protects your young athletes, but also the environment they play in? Be a proactive guardian. Safeguard your home by disposing of medications properly through drop-off sites in New Jersey, located at most police departments and designated pharmacies. By doing so, you help prevent pollution of our precious environment, ensuring clean waterways and healthier surroundings for your young champions. Make a positive impact on their lives and the planet. Safely dispose of unused and unwanted medications today. James Ultimo, your trusted licensed real estate professional at Exit Realty Connections in Hackettstown, New Jersey. With over 36 years of customer service excellence, James is the smart choice whether you're buying or selling. Your dream property journey starts with James Ultimo. Contact me today to turn your real estate dreams into reality. James Ultimo, 973-214-6448. Sport Acura of Denville, we know you have a lot of choices when it comes to buying your new Acura. So why shop with dealers that don't value your time or play games with you? Why not choose a dealership that always values their clients' time and has set a benchmark in customer service for nearly 40 years? Make it easy. Choose Autosport Acura of Denville. For sales, service, and a relationship you can rely on, make it easy and choose Autosport Acura of Denville. Brian, we just got a text from your wife. She wants to trade in her car for something else. Chief, I'm a little busy. The goal, we reset, and TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda. Brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open ice. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti, oh! in the end zone, it is caught. Charge, great for the pass, here's a shot, right in front, score! And that is a base hit, the run will score. And freshman, full check, gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is gonna make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three, he got it! Uh -huh. here on Morris Sussex Sports as we await Friday Night Lights homecoming here from Bridgewater Raritan High School. Again, welcome in to this broadcast with me, Lloyd Wilson, give you all the play-by-play -play action for tonight's game. And as you can see from some of the fans, or you'll even see from some of the players, they'll have pink on today as today is a pink out as told to me by the student section today. And if this is your first broadcast here at Moore Sussex Sports, well, at Bridgewater Raritan High School, rather, this is the student section is also called the zoo. So with the zoo, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the jungle. As the Panthers will get things rumbling off first, they will receive, rather, uh, Minutemen will receive possession in the second half, but for the Panthers, a great way to get their offense started from a rough week last week. 
as they were they turned the ball over in the first half and also gave the touchdown to Phillipsburg. They will be the first to possess the ball here tonight as the kick is up and away. And here we go. On the far side, having some space and then dragged down inside the 40. They might put this at the 33-34 yard line. And we get this game started. Coming out, starting quarterback for Bridgewater Raritan, Jack Bray coming this one with over 1,000 yards passing, 1,200 well, 1,252. Also in double-digit standards with the touchdowns to interceptions ratio, 16 and 7. Also a dual-threat quarterback, not afraid to run, has 19 carries for 11 yards. They start out now with a pass, and they go to the far side. I believe that's Swanson. Swanson's going to get about five. On the catch was actually number five in Colin Woodring. The stop made by Alexander Ramirez, gain of five on the play, second down. So second and five coming up for the Panthers, and what a great way to get Jack Bray started. They hand this one off to Verano. Verano takes that to the far side of the field. He's short about the first down, but a solid gain of about four. So interesting fact about both of these two teams as they've had struggling seasons. But both of these two teams, they've lost their games every week by morally, really just by one possession. Two to the bottom of your screen, two to the top. Hand off to Verano once again, going inside as he's just able to get to the first line, first down marker to extend the chains and extend this drive. So even for last week against Phillipsburg in that loss, 42 to 19, they were able to move the ball, but turnovers did kill the Panthers. Hand off to Verano once again, but they go to the left side of that line, gain of about four. So for Bridgewater Raritan, not able to score at all in that first half, really struggling, gave up a touchdown on the other end as Jack Bray threw a pick six on the far side last week. They're trying to start off this offense on the right track. Here's Bray talked about his dual threat ability as he's short for the first down as they were trying to get to the pitch for Verano. But the D-line on the near side shut that down for the Minutemen. On that defense is Ja'Cory Williams on that right side. And this might be a QB sneak, only need one yard. Jack Bray under center, looking at his head coach in Catalano. Making sure they only need one yard. They hand this one off. Verano, Verano has some space, gets the first down and more. And that's, that's actually Dane Swanson. So Verano, not getting the call, weighing about 190, not going to use it that time. They're going to use Dane Swanson, who's 20 pounds lighter at 170. Handoff, rather this one, the read option to Swanson on the far side inside that slot position, a gain of about five. That's complete to Dane Swanson. So for the Panthers, they're moving the ball well compared to last week where they weren't able to score any points in the first half, starting to move the ball really well in this first half tonight. On their homecoming now, two split out wide to each side. Bray looks left, throws left, has a man. That's Swanson. Swanson able to get to it, the first down at the 30-yard line to extend this drive even more. Pass is complete to Dane Swanson. Stop made by Kwameen Williams. Yeah. Kwameen Williams on that outside yeah. playing the DB position, standing at 6 feet 170. And we have a pause in the action. They wanted to make sure they extend the drive and extend the chains, and they do. Two split out wide to the top of your screen and one to the bottom. Bray in the shotgun, and the false, rather the offsides, comes from the Minutemen. So that hard count from Jack Bray works efficiently this time. First time they used the hard count on this drive. It's something they might want to go back to later in this game. In the same formation for the Panthers, two split out wide, one to the bottom of your screen. This one a handoff in the backfield. And bullying his way forward. Dane Swanson on the carry. That is Dane Swanson. We talked about how he's more of a gadget kind of player. Using the backfield as well in that slot position. We see him now go to the slide at the top of your screen. 
In the backfield is Verano. One to the bottom of your screen. Bray in the shotgun. Claps his hands. Hands this one off to Verano. Verano following his blockers. Only one man to be. He's able to shade off two tacklers. He's able to get the first down as they're already in the red zone, maybe about two yards away from being first and goal. They're going to officially put this ball on the 12-yard line. Motion man from the far side. Bray looks left, throws left, has a man. This might be a touchdown. Zivo to evade one, getting hit all over the place, down at the one. Catch made by number 15, Anthony Caffaloni. That pass is complete to Anthony Caffaloni. So Anthony Caffalone able to get them at the one, and the Panthers weren't able to score a touchdown in the first half last week, threatening to do it here. Handoff, Swarson into the end zone. Touchdown, Panthers, able to get their first score of the night. Panthers get in for six as they couldn't get in last week in the first half against Phillipsburg, and they hand off to their main guy, Dane Swarson, one of the guys to watch in this game. Following his blockers into the end zone. Verano right there leading the charge. You see him pumping his fist. Able to get into the end zone. Dane Swanson now with three touchdowns on the season. So Dane Swanson now three touchdowns rushing, five through the air all together. That makes eight. He's almost double digits in touchdowns this season. Panthers strike first here at Bridgewater Raritan High School. We'll be right back here on more Sussex Sports. Fast what? Fast lane. Bring her in. This is us? Paul Miller Fast Lane? Who else would do it? Buy a car? Trade a car? Finance a car? Have it delivered completely online? This is so easy. She could have done it herself. She said you're the car guy, Brian. Isn't that the truth? Get the fast lane, winner. It's the only way to fly. That's Fast Lane. Powered by Paul Miller. That is the Paul Miller difference. DNA Landscaping. We service all of your lawn care needs. We are a full-service lawn care and landscaping company providing traditional needs such as lawn maintenance, planting, trimming, mulch, tree removal, and stump grinding, as well as landscape design. Back here on more Sussex Sports with me, Lloyd Wilson. Panthers able to strike first, but after the blocked field goal, there are, it is a six to nothing game. And here come the Minutemen trying to respond. The man in the backfield, Ibn McDaniels, the senior, one of the players to watch, standing at 6'3", 173. The kick is off, and it's away over McDaniel's head. First bounces at the 20, all the way back at the 10. Y'all right, and a big hit coming from the Panthers. And a late hit coming from, it looks to be Verano. And Frankie Verano laid the absolute wood on McDaniel's late flag coming. So without a doubt, a late hit. But his defense, rather his special teams coach, still gives him a high five saying, we're playing through the whistle. No whistle was blown. So this ball was still in play if McDaniels wanted to pick it up, but he was pretty much on the sideline at the 10 yard line. They may put this at the 11. But that's exactly what coaches say. We played through the whistle. There was no whistle that was blown just yet. And McDaniels pays for it. Verano really laying the wood on that one. Verano playing running back for this squad, but also showed that he can play some inside linebacker potentially. So after the penalty, they're going to put this ball on the 50-yard line after it was at the 10. So a ball that was at the 10-yard line Almost went out, threatening of going out. McDaniel was watching it go out. They put this ball at the 59, 50 yard line, maybe the 49. And that's where the Minutemen will start their drive. And the freshman quarterback, Enrique Fleming, throwing over 1,000 yards himself, along with nine touchdowns and six interceptions. Motion man coming across, that's McDaniels. And that one's fumbled on immediately. Rather, that was Imad Canty that was hit, not Ibn McDaniels. Ibn McDaniels wearing number zero for the Minutemen. Again, the Minutemen coming this one, one and six under their head coach and John Fiore. And for the Minutemen, they've lost every game this season only by one possession, folks. So they've been in every game this season, just haven't been able to really put it together and finish drives and finish games. They did win against Union last week, 28-26, another one possession game. And that's where they got their first win of the season. Motion man coming across, Fleming. 
with a late handoff. This one's going to be tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of about three. So third and forever, or rather third and long, really coming up early for the Minutemen. Enrique Fleming last week, 13 for 18, over 158 yards, throwing two touchdowns in an interception against Union. Jalees Mendoza also had a solid game with 10 carries and 24 yards and a touchdown. Nyrus McDougald also 10 carries and 48 yards. So they had a solid running game, just enough to get past Union. And with that, a late timeout on the field. But we'll keep things here. Some players to watch. And again, if you're just tuning into this broadcast, Jalees Mendoza. Again, who had a 10-carry game last week with 24 yards. They did struggle to get the ground game moving. He did have a touchdown, but that came later on in that game against Union. Nyrese McDougal, 10 carries of 48 yards. It was really the air game that won it for the Minutemen last week. And then Imad Kenny, who we saw get hit on the kickoff, he had a game with three catches, 68 yards, a touchdown as well. Ibn McDaniels, five catches, 59 yards, and a touchdown. So the ball was definitely spread around and given some love all around the field. So third and long coming up, third and 13. Two split out wide in the pistol formation, the freshman in Fleming back there. Handoff, and he's going to take it himself as he's trying to just make this a decent enough punt and give them field position. And I think he's about three yards short, two yards short of that first down. Not sure if head coach John Fiore was going to go for it. He's going to keep that offense on there for the, for the initial look. So the offense will stay out there. So the offense stays out there in the same formation. Two split out wide, once at the bottom of your screen, the pistol formation. Fleming in the shotgun, looks over to his head coach. And now he gets the call. Fourth and three. They hand this one off. They're able to just get past the sticks, maybe two yards more. They needed three. They got five. That time, handoff to Jamal Lyles, the junior, 5'8", 165. Jamal Lyles comes into this game with 56 carries, 232 yards, and five touchdowns on the season. One of their guys to go to on the ground. Couldn't get it going last week against Union. Pistol formation once again. Two to the bottom of your screen, one to the top. This one, handoff. There's Lyles again, and he's going to get about five yards with that ball being extended. Some players on that D-line. Logan James, who was honored with one of the homecoming nominees for Prince and Princess. We saw him on the field earlier before this game got kicked off. And he's in, the, in on the play on that tackle. That time the handoff was to number two, Nyrese McDougall. So now third and medium coming up, third and six to be exact. Third and six for the Minutemen who had no problem scoring last week in the first half. Stack set to the far side, one to the bottom. This one, end around action. They hand this one off to Canty. Canty not able to get to the first down six as he's tackled just outside of the 45 yard line. And he's going to be about six yards short. Maybe no gain on this play. Just got back to the line of scrimmage. Fourth down coming up for the Minutemen again. The second fourth down they've had in this series alone. Offense stays out there initially. And the offense will go for it. The freshman, Enrique Fleming, in the empty set, trips to the top of your screen, two to the bottom, but a timeout call 
by Cantilano and the Panthers. So while they talk it over, we'll take a step off here on Morris Sussex Sports. Morris and Sussex counties for both residential and commercial properties. Call DNA Landscaping at 973-223-5845. George J. Keller and Sons want your house to be the kind of home for all to see. Best roofing, windows, siding too. Great solar and gutters, we're here for you. Our seasoned pros are unsurpassed, so give a call, we'll take your task. Transform your home, that's what we do. So give a call, we're here for you. For roofing, siding, windows and solar, we do it all for you. George J. Keller and Sons. Your family owned operation since 1980. Call for your free estimate. Back here on more Sussex Sports with me, Lloyd Wilson. 6 nothing ball game in favor of the home team, Bridgewater Raritan, after the blocked field goal, after the touchdown made by Dane Swarnson. Fourth down coming up for the Minutemen, second fourth down on this series. Pistol formation, Fleming. The motion man coming across, that's Sadges. And this one's going to be a deep ball and incomplete to the end zone, intended receiver on the play is number one, in my Canty. So he went to one of his star guys. And defender on the play, number 21. Number 21 for Bridgewater Raritan, as we don't have a official number for him. We'll be sure to get that cleanup going into the second half, but great defense by the Panthers to stop the Minutemen on fourth down. This one, a handoff. Swarson already has a touchdown in this game running the football, and he's going to be tackled at the line of scrimmage. No game. Dane Sorensen on the carry, stopped by Maurice McDougal and Isaiah DeRosa. Second down. After the, after the blocked extra point, not field goal. After the blocked extra point is a 6 nothing game. This one a handoff in the back. That's Verano. Able to get a minimal gain, about three. Third and medium coming up. As we're approaching the two-minute mark here in the first quarter. And for the Panthers, offensively, have had a better game so far this week than they did last week, scoring a first-half touchdown. Trips to the top of your screen, offsides again. The guilty party, number 26, Davon Davis, the senior. Flag on the play is offsides against the Minutemen. So that's the second time that the Minutemen have jumped off size in this game. Again, the hard count. We talked about how it worked the first time, something they might want to go back to later in this game. Well, they go right back to it in the first quarter. Same set. Handoff coming out with a burst of speed, able to get past the first down sticks. They extend this drive on the carry as Verano. Frankie Verano on the carry, stop made by Devon Davis. That play good for a Panther first down. Trips to the top of your screen, one to the bottom. Motion man coming closer to the offensive line. Hand off Verano once again, carrying his way for a gain of three. Verano on the carry, stop made by Kwame Williams. Gain of two on the play, second down. As we saw one of the centers, rather the offensive lineman, his padding came off. It's number 68, Austin McRae. This one a throw to Swanson on the far side on the wide receiver screen, but that one's dropped. Not a lot of drops from Dane Swanson. A play that the Panthers love to go to, that jailbreak screen. Trips to the top of your screen. Third down coming up, and you won't believe it. Hard count once again works against the Minutemen. Jumping off sides, number 26, Davon Davis. His second time on this drive, jumping off sides. And as a senior, you know, he's seen that hard count so many times throughout his years. Have to be more disciplined. And now makes this a third and three. Motion coming across. Bray drops back, throw. He has Verano. Verano hit at the 50-yard line by number four, Isaiah De Rosa. 
the senior makes a heads up play and makes up for the other seniors faulty. We'll try to throw a quick pitch out to Verano, but nothing there. This one just inside Minute Maid territory. They'll say at the 50, at the 49, the opposite side. Strips to the bottom of your screen, one man to the top. Offense still out there, fourth and five. Bray in the shotgun with Verano. He takes the snap, looks left, throws across the middle, has a man, Swarson on the slant route. Now dragged down on the opposite side. He didn't think he was down. Complete. That one caught at the 35-yard line. And folks, with a slant route, nothing but timing on that one. For Jack Bray, it's only a three-step drop back, and he has to find his man, Swanson, over the middle, in the middle of the defense. Here is now Verano. He goes to the switch sides, one from the right side, cuts back to the left for a gain of about five. Frankie Verano on the carry. That made by Jaquiri Williams. So they'll say officially a gain of four. Second and for Ferrano, can't ask for better. Averaging about four to five yards a carry. That dials up for a great day offensively on the ground. And after one quarter, six nothing ball game. We go to the second in favor of the Panthers. We'll be right back here on more Sussex Sports. Everything is made daily using real fresh ingredients and you can taste the difference. We specialize in creating gluten-free options for our customers, all prepared in a separate area so there's no cross-contamination. We also pride ourselves on providing unparalleled catering for events big and small. We love what we do. Stop into Pat Scarola Brothers, you'll taste the difference. I actually used to be deathly afraid of public speaking. I intentionally became an adjunct professor teaching tax, and I also became a Zumba instructor as a way of overcoming this fear of mine. They're both forms of leading and teaching in their own right. Bottom line though, WISP supports my passions. I truly believe that WISP wants me to be the best version of myself, and it's such an amazing feeling that I truly have the freedom to do that here. Back here on more Sussex Sports. Jack Bray looks left and then has nothing there, so he has to will the, throw this one into the ground so it's dead. We like to... We'd like to thank this game, one of our sponsors tonight, JAG Physical Therapy in Bridgewater, bringing compassionate PT care to Somerset County. JAG Physical Therapy, Bridgewater is located, is a local physical therapy clinic with multiple specialties. Conveniently located on Route 22. Our therapy staff will listen to your needs and work with you to create after a gain of about five on the carry from Verano. Our therapy staff will listen to your needs and work with you to grow. It will work with you to create the right customized treatment plan for you and your others. Contact us at 908-224-2705. Again, that's 908-224-2705. Fourth down coming up, and they do the tush push. Panthers able to get the one yard. Extending this drive and moving the chains. On the carry, that play, good for a On the 26-yard line, six-yard, rather 23-yard line, three yards away from being in official red zone territory. But the Panthers moving the ball efficiently this week against this Minutemen squad. Hand off, Verano, halfback counter, cut back to the right side. Verano cutting through defenders. Extending this drive close to the 10 yard line, might be short of it, maybe at the eight. They actually will say the 13. That's another Panther first down. Swanson coming over in motion. They hand it off to Swanson, who he does a cut back as well. Able to get just past the 10 now. Dave Swanson on the carry. So they said he's exactly on the 10 yard line. Second down. So first and goal, or the second and goal coming up. Actually, they still have an opportunity to get the first down, I believe at the seven yard line. Bray. Looks, now throws over to the right side and some miscommunication. He was allowing Swanson to get his route open as he had a man through the middle, but he was looking for Swanson 
just at the bottom of the end zone at that front pylon, allowing the play to develop. So third down coming up. Panthers still have an opportunity to get the first down, but it, when you're this close, you pretty much might just go for the touchdown. So the first down looks like it's at the three yard line. Bray looks over, and then this one right through the hands of Woodring. So the ball was placed on the seven yard line. They were able to get the first, if possible, fourth down. From the marker on this side, maybe at the four or three yard line on the far side. So the Panthers will settle for three. Joe Scuturini to attempt the field goal. Kicker, Dylan Serini. Oh. The hole, the kick is up and is through. Extends this ball game nine to nothing in favor of the Panthers. The Panthers go downfield. They don't come away with six, but they get half of it in three. As long as they have the lead, they feel comfortable moving that football on the offensive end. We'll be right back here on more Sussex Sports. Hey, Everyone, what's up? This is Sean from Sean Malloy Fitness. Here's a little video to show you what we do here. Back here on Moore Sussex Sports and me, Lloyd Wilson, after the field goal made by Tierney, make this a 9 nothing ball game for the Panthers. Rather, it was not Tierney, it was Joe Sacasarini. Scorini. As this one takes a hop, and then that one goes to Canty. Canty, who was hit on the last kickoff return as he just falls down at the 30 yard line, that's where this drive will start. Fleming, the handoff, and with a burst of speed, right through the defense, and then tackled at the 40-yard line. Number five, Jamont Lyles. <laughs> 30-yard carry on that run. Jamont Lyles burst right out of the backfield for a 30-yard gain. Trips to the top of your screen, one to the bottom, trying to get this offense for the Minutemen moving. Lyle still there in the back with Fleming. And the officials holding up the game, not aware, not sure of the reasoning. Trips at the top, they hand off to Lyles once again. Lyles not even gonna get back to the line of scrimmage. This might be a loss of one. Come on, Lyles on the carry. It's that made by Joe Spiro and Chris Del Centro. Lost one on the play, second down. I used to do your job, but I know. <laughs> Trips to the 
Trips to the top of your screen, one to the bottom. In the backfield, that's Lyles. This one, try to do a receiver screen to number 17, Sagius. Rather, Sags. And either way, if Sags would have caught that one, it would have still been a loss. Draped all over it. It's number 21. Aiden West on the coverage. So we saw Aiden West make a play on the ball on the last series. It hit him in the back, but still making a play over and not getting a flag for P.I. So here are the Minutemen, two split out wide, motion man coming across, this McDaniels. Fleming reverses around, has Greengrass on the far side. This is a pass that was going to the left side of the field, and then the rookie quarterback tackled just before the 15 yard line. As we're gonna see here, he looked left and then did a little twist in the backfield and then had nothing but green grass on the far side, tracking him down. We saw it was Aiden West, but making the tackle was number 22, Dylan Tierney. Great heads up play by the freshman. And Enrique Fleming, Fleming knows how to throw the ball, but we also just saw he can run it as well. Timeout the time taken out. by the Panthers. Head coach Catalano might want to talk over with his defense on that big game from Fleming. We'll be right back here on more Sussex Sports. Where brilliance meets compassion in crafting your perfect smile. With a board-certified orthodontist, Dr. Patel, your smile is in expert hands. Our commitment to the latest advancements in technology bring precision and comfort to your orthodontic experience. Whether you are considering braces or aligners for yourself or for your child, call today at 908-852-9899 or visit us at www.gemstoneortho.com to schedule a complimentary consultation. Maximum Health Physical Therapy is an individually owned practice with offices in Bud Lake and Long Valley, New Jersey. Our licensed therapists use hands-on manual therapy and are actively involved in our patients' progress. Back here on more Sussex Sports, me, Lloyd Wilson, Enrique Fleming in the backfield, and he was hopping his feet, chopping his feet, but no one open. He's going to take it himself. He's still up on the far side, then dragged just before the first down marker. We'll see if he got the first down, though. He'll be one yard short, second down Maria coming up. Gary, stop made by Dean Sorensen. Second down. Sorensen with the tackle on the far side. Second and one coming up on the seven-yard line. And Fleming, who I thought was initially tackled at the line of scrimmage, he was able to fight for extra yardage. Second and one. In the backfield with him, Jamad Miles. Jamad Lyles, rather. Trips to the bottom of your screen, one man to the top. Fleming hands this one off to Lyles. Lyles following his blockers, getting past the five yard line, might be now at the four. Jamal Lyles on the carry, who's stopped made by Dylan Tierney. Now first and goal. So first and goal for the Minutemen, the first time they've seen the red zone tonight. So head coach John Fiore, Dialing up something here inside the red zone. Look like they're going with the I formation as it is a bunch set. So this is a tight pistol formation. Fleming, handoff inside the tackles, and this one might be a no gainer after the handoff to Lyles. There was three Panthers in that vicinity with no real proximity. Rather, there's no space for the Minutemen to really work with as they came with a bunch pistol set. So looking to spread things out now, one to the top of your screen, one to the bottom, but they'll still have a bunch pistol formation on the five yard line. The furthest man back is Jamal Lyles. Lyles, he gets the carry. He's carrying it to the right side and just not getting enough blockage up front. Gain of about one. So now third and goal coming up for the Miniman. 
My vinyl's on the carry. Stop made by Aiden West. Third Players to watch here in the red zone. Obviously, the quarterback, Enrique Fleming. Got a mock candy out there along with McDaniels. Players to watch out for. And now, talking it over will be the Minutemen. And the Minutemen call the timeout. So the Minutemen call a timeout, but we'll keep things here. For this broadcast, we also like to thank Bridgewater and Chevrolet, Kevin Yento, Real Estate and Associates, also Cuco Funeral and Cremation Services, Nissan of North Plainfield, Value Auto and Van Rental, Honda Bridgewater, North Point Bank, Five Star Orthodontist, and Zone Sports Academy. We'd also like to bring awareness to pancreatic cancer and all the people who are battling with this disease, including our long time play-by-play -play broadcaster, Brett Luthner, who was diagnosed this summer. Brett bravely sta started treatment, and while cancer is no match for Brett, we ask that you send prayers and good energy his way. So here come the Minutemen after that timeout, talking things over on third and goal. Bunch formation again. Well, still pistol formation in the backfield with Fleming. Fleming takes this one himself, following the blockers, try to cut it back, but then he stopped up short at the three-yard line. Fourth and goal now for the Minutemen. They probably just wanted to get this one further, knowing that this is a four-down territory worth of possession. So this series is not over. They're not going to kick the field goal. I don't think they're going to send the special teams unit out. They're going to keep the offense on the three-yard line, six minutes and counting now. So even if the Minutemen do not get it, they pin the Panthers deep in their own territory. Empty set for the Minutemen. Trips to the bottom of your screen, two to the top. Fleming takes the handoff. QB draw right up the middle. Goes in for six. Arike Fleming, the freshman quarterback, able to get in for six points to cut this deficit now by three. As we look at the replay here, fooled us all with the empty set, taking this one right up the middle in the gut of the defense. And he walks in for six, now having 10 touchdowns on the season. In terms of rushing, it's his first one. So 10 total touchdowns on the season, his first rushing touchdown on the season. And they're going to go in for two. This one a trick play, and this one overthrown, has a wide open man in the end zone. They try to throw it to number 88. That's Lucas Martinez on the back end of the end zone. And on the throw, Ibn McDaniels. McDaniels who doesn't have a touchdown throwing the football this season, tried to go in for the two-point conversion to make this a 9-8 ball game, but it stays at 9-6 in favor of the Panthers. Three-point ball game with 5.45 left to go in this first half. We'll be staying here as the Panthers come back. Awaiting to go back on offense. They've been moving the ball efficiently this, this evening. Aside from the blocked extra point, the, the ball has been moving efficiently. And they still hold a three-point lead. And for your Evan McDaniels, for the Minutemen, you just have to feel sick. Your guy is wide open, just overshot him in the back end of the end zone. This one a kickoff. And I believe that Swarson at the 15-yard line. He takes this one out to the left side. Swarson has room to run. Then he's dragged down, initially hit at the 35-yard line. They said this ball came out. Minutemen said they have it, and they do. A turnover for the Minutemen on special teams. The fumble is recovered by the Minutemen. And they're already inside Panthers territory. We can see where this ball came out around the 37-yard line. And they're going to put this ball in the 38. So Swanson coughs up the ball inside the Panthers' territory. And now this defense is out once again after surrendering the touchdown and almost a two-point conversion. 
So now the Minutemen have an opportunity to take the lead or even tie this game. But we've seen they haven't even set out the special teams so far tonight. So that offense might just go ahead, even if it is on fourth down, wanting to talk it over. Are the Minutemen using their second timeout of the evening. They have one more left. Hall of Fame inductees, whether individual or teams, please make their way to the end zone by the scoreboard. Again, we like to thank Jag One Physical Therapy in Bridgewater, bringing compassionate PT care to Somerset County. Jag One PT Bridgewater is a local physical therapy clinic with multiple specialties conveniently located on Route 22. Our staff will listen to your needs and work with you to create the right customized treatment plan for you. Contact us at 908-224-2705 or at jagpt.com. It is Jag. There is a Jag 1 in Bridgewater. That's what I thought it was. So rather, Jag Physical Therapy in Bridgewater. So here comes the offense now for the Minutemen, who actually just use only one timeout, so they still have two more in this first half. Trips to the top of your screen, one to the bottom. Fleming looks, fires, of course, it on the far side. This one a bit underthrown, but incomplete. Look, he almost got his feet down, but an incomplete pass on the far side. They tried to go to Ibn McDaniels. McDaniels almost got them in the red zone with just one play. Individuals, contributors, coaches, and teams, please. For Fleming, zone near the just has to get that ball in front of McDaniels. If anything, he was able to beat the corner on the far side for the Panthers. On the far side, that's Swanson. So Swanson, who was beat just for a yard, but Fleming not able to get it to his receiver. Pistol formation for Fleming now. And Ma Candy comes in the slot position. Now he's coming over in the motion and then dragged down in the backfield with a loss of about five. Lyles tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Third and long coming up for the Minutemen. On the play, third down. Who they are a down away from wasting this field position. Ball on the 40 yard line. So they say a loss of two as this drive started on the 38. Substitutions real quick. Going out of the game was Guerrero. Fleming looking left. And he's going to take it and run it himself. Fleming able to try to hurdle a man just past the 35-yard line. Inbounds. Clock continues to roll, but he might be short as he is. Fourth down coming up, fourth and five to be exact. 4.30 left to go in this first half. And we haven't seen the special teams unit come out for this Minutemen squad all game. Why would we see them now as the offense stays out there? In this current formation, trips to the top of your screen. And there is Lyles as well, more likely be in the backfield. And then to the bottom of your screen, Michael Sage. So they've only targeted once on that wide receiver screen that he dropped. Lyles in the backfield to the right of Fleming. Trips to the top of your screen. Fourth and five coming up for the Minutemen. Fleming rolls to his right. Almost got sacked. This one thrown. First down. Nice catch and adjustment for number one in Ma Canty. That's complete to Ma Canty. Canty had to adjust his body to the ball. Canty was looking for the ball to be on his outside, but then turned his body to the inside to extend this drive. And what a throw by the freshman in Fleming who almost had that play blown up. The defensive line getting all the way to Fleming. Essentially, we're here to stiff arm his offensive lineman. Drive continues at the 24-yard line. Takes the snap. Hands this one off to Lyles. Lyles not able to get positive yardage. Might just get back to the line of scrimmage. Lyles on the carry. So they say a loss of one. Dave Johnson and Ashford Fritzinger. Loss of one on the play. Second down. So second and long coming up for the Minutemen. Canty still out there who 
made that impressive catch to continue this drive. We also see number seven, Najee Smith, who we haven't really called his name a lot. And on the far side, Evan McDaniels. Pistol formation, Fleming. Looks, uncorks, on the far side of the field, going up for the football. This one batted down. Great defense that time by Dane Swanson. Was beat the last time he had the matchup with McDaniels and Fleming not able to get it to him in space. This time, Dane Swanson all over it and bats this one out of bounds. Once again, all Hall of Fame inductees, please make your way to the end zone near the scoreboard. Here at Bridgewater Raritan with me, Lloyd Wilson, homecoming is... You can see some of the pink on the field for the players, some of the socks, along with the gloves. It is a pink out today here at Bridgewater Raritan High School. Trips to the bottom of your screen. Fleming takes the snap, hands this one off. Rather, he'll pitch it to the McDaniels on the far side. McDaniels not going to get to the first down markers. He's well short. Fourth down coming up. Both teams love to run that RPO option. And sometimes can fool the eyes of the broadcaster. It looks like a handoff, but then they'll just toss it out to the receiver. So fourth down coming up, fourth and long. Ball on the 24. Empty set. In this same formation, Fleming was able to go in for a touchdown. Fleming, he's going to do the same thing here, right up the gut, but he's not going to get to the sticks. Twirling and short of the 15-yard line. So it'll be a turnover on downs, the first time for the Minutemen this evening. And the Panthers take possession at the 17-yard line. McDaniels, rather Fleming, needed the 15, only able to get to the 17. Short two yards. Trips to the bottom of your screen for the Panthers as they're pinned in their territory at the 17-yard line. One to the top of your screen. Bray looks, uncorks, has Spira in that slot position, and he was hit for a gain of four. They say a gain of three, rather. Spira with a three-yard gain, second down. They switch sides, trips to the top of your screen. Motion man coming across, that's Spira. Bray looks, uncorks, that man has Dane Swanson. Swanson with space, just not able to evade one man, but going all way to the 45-yard line inside of Minuteman territory. Mama, there goes that man again. They love that jailbreak screen. Swanson, who dropped it in the first quarter, able to switch field position. Bray, empty scent. Looks. Looks now to this right, rolling out, but then looks like he was going to the first level, but then try to go to the second level. And they say incomplete pass. And tender receiver was Joseph Barcotondo. On the covers for the Minutemen, David Forjure. <laughs> Empty set for Jack Bray. Trips to the top of your screen, two to the bottom. Bray in the empty set. Takes the snap. Looks left. Has a man. That's Spear once again in that slot position. About three yards short of the first down. Complete from Bray to Joe Spears. Brings up third and short. And eight on the play. Second down. They need two. Empty set again for Bray. Bray looks right, throws right, has Spear once again. Same play for the stick route. They needed two. They got seven. Continuing this drive. Hurry up offense. 62 seconds left to go in the first half. Bray calling out the signals. Trips to the top of your screen. Two to the bottom. Checks. To the sideline for the play. Looking at the defense. Makes the adjustments. Claps his hand. Takes a snap. Looks left. Throws left. Has a man on the far side. Stiff arming his way for a short gain of about two. Pass to complete. Anthony Confalone. Stop made by Evan McDaniel. Gain of one on the play. Anthony Confalone, number 15, for a short gain. All the timeout. And then the timeout on the field call. Panthers still have a three-point advantage. Fans, don't forget to stick around. This is a team, ladies and gentlemen, that did struggle last week in the first half. Jack Bray threw an interception in the first half to give a pick six, pick six against Phillipsburg. This time, the Panthers able to go down and score 
on their first possession, on their first series, to put up six. Had the extra point blocked, but then had a field goal on this same side of the field on their last series. See Cafalone trotting out there along with number eight and Joseph Lacortando. Jack Bray as well. Jack Bray in the empty set still trips to the bottom of your screen, two to the top. Both teams with two timeouts each. Bray takes a snap, looks right, rolls now to his right, chasing him down as the defense. Has a man, that one almost dropped, but it caught by number eight. But Lacortando, rather Colin Woodring, hurry up offense in effect. 20 seconds left to go in this first half. Bray, a quick pass to Lacortando, not down initially on the first hit. And now 14 seconds and counting, but a timeout, I believe, will be called. First down. Rather no timeout call. Clock continues to move, and then a spike by Jack Bray. So 11 seconds left to go in this first half. The field goal is very much in play here for the Panthers if they want to go for it. Usually in this position, with second down, 11 seconds, maybe one or two shot plays. Jack Bray looks left, now looks to his right. Looks in the middle for a brief moment. This one a dart to the sideline, but that one incomplete. Intended man on that one was Lacretando. Defending on the play was the near side corner, number nine, David Forger. So that play took about five seconds. Now with six seconds left to go in this first half, probably have time for one more shot play. And for Bridgewater Raritan, they still have two timeouts. Rather, they have three timeouts, all of their timeouts. Bray. Looking for that wheel route, has to get rid of it. Has only three seconds, now sacked in the backfield. Will they be able to get a timeout off in time? Bray on the carry. And they say no, and that he will do it for the first half. That is the end of the first half with the score. On the sack, number 26, Davian Davis, who we saw jump off sides twice in this first half, and the Panthers come up empty in the first half, rather on that possession, with points. And for Jack Bray, with a wheel out, a, a wheel route, he was looking on that right side, just has to know the time of when to get rid of it to give yourself enough time for a field goal opportunity. But they come up empty, and they only score nine points in the first half. Nine, six ball game here from Bridgewater Raritan High School. We'll be back here for second half action on Morris Sussex Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please direct your attention to the home side track for the Bridgewater Iron High School Panther Cheerleaders Halftime Routine. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bridgewater Raritan Panther cheerleaders. Thank you. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the field the award-winning Bridgewater Raritan High School marching band under the direction of Nick Massa. The Bridgewater Raritan High School marching band takes the field tonight to perform their 2023 program titled The Journey of a Hero. The band will be competing at six events this season, including championship appearances at both Rutgers University and the College of New Jersey in late October. The band would like to thank all the parents, administrators, teachers, and staff that advocate for music in our schools. The steady support for the Bridgewater Raritan High School Band has been the foundation for the band's many successes including most recently a 2021 state championship title. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise for your Bridgewater Raritan High School marching band. Last meeting, right? Uh, this year, I met you 
Well, wait, did I go with you to see
gentlemen, your Bridgewater Rarn High School Panther Marching Band.
yeah, first squad did well. Or they made it to like the second round of national. I know she will. Yes, but it's because Accept most insurance plans, including Medicare. We offer ArpWave Neurotherapy, which accelerates healing 10 times faster, drastically decreases chronic pain, is FDA approved, and is covered by most insurance companies. Please visit us at MaximumHealthPT.com and regain the life you love. Sussex Meatpacking in Wharton, New Jersey is a family-owned and operated business specializing in USDA prime and choice meats, pork, poultry, lamb, veal, and many other store-made specialty items. They also have a fantastic deli, a wonderful market with all the freshest fruits, veggies, and pre-made meals, and they can cater any event, including your family holiday dinners, more delicious than you can on your own. Visit them at sussexmeat.com. Do your glory days as a high school athlete feel far behind you? Are memories of being out there competing so clear that you can feel it? But then reality sets in and your stiff back, achy knees, and painful shoulders remind you that it's been years or even decades since you can move that way. Don't worry. The team at Better With Physical Therapy's one-on-one customized care can help you feel and move better again. Their specialists will find the cause of what's slowing you down and build a plan that will help you realize that your glory days are still ahead of you. You can get better with better with physical therapy located in the madison ymca request an appointment today at betterwithpt.com the county college of morris foundation annual golf classic is coming to brook lake country club in florham park on monday october 16th golfers will enjoy 18 holes of golf on one of new jersey's premier courses between a barbecue lunch spread and a buffet dinner Registration begins at 11 a.m., giving golfers access to the locker room, driving range, and lunch in the clubhouse before our 12.30 shotgun start. At 5 p.m., enjoy an open bar cocktail reception prior to our 6 p.m. dinner and awards program. Proceeds benefit CCM student-athletes. Register online at ccm.edu slash foundation slash golf. Go ahead, take a deep breath. Oh, nice, huh? That's some clean, fresh air at the perfect temperature. That is good, who installed the system? ICS, they're the leaders in HVAC. They make the duct work at their own factory, so we even save some money. That's impressive. You recommend them? <laughs> it's ICS for HVAC. I see why. Ah. Hey Lorraine, go get a big plastic bag. Take some air home with you. Would say that the most valuable thing WIS offers is freedom. The freedom to make the most of your role, to really go beyond the job description, the freedom to think differently and be rewarded for it, and the freedom to show up as 100% who you are.
Back here on more Sussex Sports with me, Lloyd Wilson, gearing up for the second half and just to clear some things off as the Panthers will give this to the Minutemen. Down three, nine, six is your score as the kickoff is off to Imad Candy. Let's this one bounce all the way back at the one into the end zone. So the touchback is in play. So they'll start this one, I believe, from the 20-yard line. But to clear that up for Jack Bray and the offense as they went out, oh, went into halftime, both teams did have no timeouts left. I thought that they had one. We cleared it up. So with no timeouts left, six seconds left, Jack Bray not able to start off as they are starting this possession from the 20-yard line. They did not have enough time to get off the field goal unit as no timeouts were left for either team. So Jack Bray still not able to get off the play for a three-point opportunity. So it stays at a three-point game, nine to six, as the Minutemen start the drive from the 20-yard line. Hand off. That one's to Lyles on the far side. Rather, that'll be McDougald, and he's going to be tackled behind the line of scrimmage, still fighting for yards, and this will be a loss of one. So McDougald, he did have a few carries in that first half, but a lot of them went to their guy, and Jamad, Jamad Lyles, rather. The only touchdown score by... Elizabeth has been to their quarterback, their freshman quarterback, Enrique Fleming, who got his first rushing touchdown of the season. Pistol formation. This one a handoff. And this one's going to be tackled behind the line. Multiple Panthers there to bring down the running back. The first carry from just Joseph Desir, the junior. Six on the play, third down. So third and long coming up for the Minutemen. Third and forever, third and 16. And you got to see a shot play coming up from the Minutemen as they just have to get back. Just get back in maybe decent punt territory. You don't want to just give it up right here. Shot play, as we said, driving over to the ball, and he's able to catch it. Running under Imad Canty. We said a shot play was needed, and they took it. Enrique Fleming with a dot, with his receiver to have room to run under it. We see Cannon coming from that slot position. And we saw him beat number 22, Dylan Tierney, and the safety not able to get to the receiver in time. And with that, they extend the drive. Now on the 44-yard line. Start at the 20, and they now at the 14. They gain 14 yards from the initial placing of the football that started this drive. On the carry, made by Aiden West. Aiden six on the play, second half. Aiden West with the tackle after a gain of six, they say. This one on the 50-yard line. Empty set once again. Rather, one man to the left of Fleming. Motion man comes across. Flag on the play. This might be a false start. And they say it is. So false start on the offense. Flag on the play. Najee Smith trying to get his second carry of the night. And this, ladies and gentlemen, as I'm getting word, and if this is the case, I think Caldwell just lost their first game in like three years. Cedar Grove over Caldwell, 15 to 14. My goodness, we'll have to check that later on in this broadcast. But I believe that's the first loss, as this one's going to be an incomplete pass, intended receiver, Najee Smith. But if I'm correct on this one, I don't believe Caldwell has lost a game in over three years. And they just lost their first one to Cedar Grove. We got to fact check that. At one point, I believe they were almost 21-0 and 0 in the past two, three seasons. What of a uh, kudos to Cedar Grove. That is a top team in North Jersey. Caldwell Fleming being tracked down and sacked behind the line of scrimmage. And with the sack. Chris Della Sancho getting his third sack of the season. 
Fleming on the carry, brought down by Logan Kreisen and Nicholas Markovich. Fourth down. So fourth down coming up, and this is the first time, ladies and gentlemen, we see the special teams trotting out to the field. So with the fourth and 14, head coach John Fiore doesn't want to have another shot play. They say we're going to punt this one away. And the one to punt this one is number 88, Lucas Martinez, who Martinez was the intended receiver on the two-point extra point that was missed in the first half. This one takes a lovely bounce just inside the 20, maybe the 19-yard line. And that's where this drive will start for the Panthers. Got it. So almost about a 35-yard punt from Martinez. As here come the Panthers. In the backfield, I believe that's Joe Spira, not Jack Bray. Spira will hand this one off as getting the first carry of the game and bulldozing his way out to the 40-yard line. Drew Davis on the carry. His first carry of the evening, Drew Davis, the senior. We haven't called his name all night. He gets his first carry, able to get a first down. Empty set once again. Davis in motion. Spira with a nice sidearm throw to his receiver. That one caught. Coming up hobbling is number 15, Anthony Calfalone. Gain of three on the play. Second down. And now this is interesting. We have Joe Spira at quarterback coming into this game has only completed two passes. Empty set, Spira. Has Davis come over again? Spear takes this one on the far side. Stiff arming a man. Oh, no way. And then extending his body to the first down marker. We'll see if he gets it. That made by Ezekiel Penny. They say he'll be a yard short, but what a stiff arm, a stiff arm by Joe Spear. <laughs> stiff arming number 13, Ezekiel Pinnock. Got to give credit where credit is due. They hand this one off to Verano. Verano able to get the first down and four more down at the 45-yard line. Joe Spira still out there. Not, oh, not sure where Jack Bray is. I don't see him currently on the sideline. Oh, Jack Bray has now just re-entered the game as Verano gets the carry, gets the call for a gain of four. But we've seen some actions from Joe Spear. Frankie Verano on the carry, stop made by Devon Davis. So for Spear, he came into this one perfect, two for two on the season, now three for three after the sidearm to Cafalone. So Spear now trots out of the game, empty set for Bray, who's now back in. Trip set to the top of your screen, two to the bottom. Bray looks back at the sideline for the play adjustment and the audible. Spira, rather, Sorensen in that slot position. This one batted down by the defense to Corey Williams. So Sorensen that was in that slot position on the far side. Looked like they were trying to get him, him the ball, but this one batted down. Verano now re-enters the game. Third and eight coming up. For the Panthers with 6.01 left to go in this third. <laughs> On the far side, trotting out there in that near side slot position, Matthew Baxter, closer to the offensive line. Two in the back with Bray. Bray, low snap, hands this one off. Nice tip off to get away from one, almost two, but then gang tackled and extending his body past the 35-yard line. They're going to say he's short, so fourth and one coming up for the Panthers. Tush push possibly coming up. Eagles love running this play, and does he get it? We'll see what the officials say. 
Minutemen said that they stopped him. And from the look of it, they say they might be short. The Panthers are short. Turnover on downs for the first time tonight. Panthers turnover on downs, first and 10 for the Minutemen. So the tush push that works so efficiently and effectively in the NFL, we see is stopped here for the Panthers in the first turnover on downs in this game. So the drive for the Minutemen will start at the 36-yard line. So trotting out is Enrique Fleming with already a touchdown to his own name on the ground, his first of the season, coming up for the second series in this game, rather in the second half. Pistol formation in the backfield with Enrique Fleming. That's Lyles and McDougall. Takes the snap, rolls to his left, try to evade the pressure, and then he just throws this one in the air. This one's up for grabs, and this one caught on the far side, evading the corner on the far side, but also evading an interception. Nyrese McDougall, no gain on the play. only yeah. with no gain, second and 10 coming up, but definitely a pass that shouldn't have been thrown and almost gave this ball up. And right back to the Panthers. Great heads up play by McDougal to just get it out of harm's way to not have the interception by the Panthers. Empty set. Fleming takes a snap directly. Quarterback draw for a gain of about three. Enrique Fleming down the carry. Is that made by Nicholas Markovic. Third and seven coming up for the Minutemen. <laughs> Trip to the bottom of your screen, one man to the top. Empty set for Fleming. Blitz coming on the far side. Initially picked up, but then not able to get it out of harm's way. The sack made by the Panthers. Fleming. Number 19, Chris Del Sancho, now with his fourth sack on the season. Lost some six on the play, fourth down. And not wanting to go for it, the Minutemen are going to punt this one away, essentially from where they punted the last time, the 34-yard line. Last time they put it away from the 37. Lucas Martinez in the punt for the Minutemen. Dane Sorensen deep for the Panthers. So about a 50-yard punt for Martinez. First and 10 for the Panthers. So a solid 50-yard punt from Martinez puts them, puts the Panthers deep just inside the 20. So at the 16-yard line, that's where the drive will start for the Panthers. And the Panthers almost had an interception. One physical therapy. James West, CPA. Crisis Consulting and Cryo Contouring Studio. Two to the bottom of your screen. Jack Bray out there. Takes the snap. Looks left. But then throws the screen on the far side. I believe that's Sorensen, who has nothing but room to run, but then pushed out. Pass complete to Sorensen. Pushed out of bounds by Ezekiel Penick. So rather that was caught by Spira. So Joe Spira on the far side. Second down. So the backup quarterback able to get in the play and get in the action after that catch. This one a handoff to, that doesn't look like Verano from the look of it. But short of the first down, they needed one. The loss on the play. That actually was Verano. So Verano chops off the field. Trip to the bottom of your screen, empty set. Two to the top of your screen. Spiro back in the game at quarterback. This one, read option, fooled the defense, and extending, but I believe he's going to be short of the first down. They said he is so able to get Spiro on the carry. They said the con clock continues to run, rather, misjudged the hand sign from the official. So it's fourth down. No, they extend the draw. They did say they get the first down. 
So they are able to get the first down. So the official did extend his arm to initial the first down. Jack Bray back in at quarterback. Handoff. Verano goes from the left and cuts back inside the defense for a gain of six. And as we're seeing with Bridgewater, they're starting to use that, we'll say, New Orleans Saints kind of offense where Taysom Hill comes in, then Derek Carr comes in. Dual threat action at the quarterback position. This one bad in the air, almost intercepted at the line. But this one will go down as an incomplete pass. Third down coming up. And it's so effective when you can have that option passing quarterback, then a dual threat quarterback that can also run it and throw it. And a guy like Spiro, perfect example is someone, is a team like the New Orleans Saints, Derek Carr, and a Taysom Hill who's able to run it up the gut and use those read options. Two to the top of your screen. Motion man coming across the offensive line. Handoff. And being short of the first down, that's Verano. Verano on the carry. Stop made by Isaiah DeRosa. And so stop behind the line of scrimmage. And the special teams unit comes out. So there's no return man in the back for the Minutemen. The farthest one back is McDougall. And this one takes his first bounce at the 45-yard line, continues to bounce. No return on Butcherini's kick. First down for the Minutemen. So about a 40-yard punt. We'll see where this ball is placed, but it, I believe it goes down around a 40-yard punt. So they put this ball officially on the 28, it looks like. So yes, on the 28-yard line. Motion man coming across. They hand that one off to Ibn McDaniels. McDaniels looking to throw. He has a man in the middle of the field. And that one almost caught. But a nice back down. And PBU. Broken up by the Panthers. Second down. Dane Swanson over there. Tracking it down, I believe, was even Aiden West. So batted down by this Panthers defense. And it was a great one as the trick play. We've seen McDaniels throw before in this game and try to get it to number 88, Lucas Martinez. But on the two-point conversion, they were unsuccessful as he overshot his man. This one. A deep shot on the far side. Has a man in stride. Only one man to beat. This could go all the way at the 10, at the 5. Touchdown, Elizabeth. Fleming's pass complete to Iman Canty. And Enrique Fleming connecting on the deep shot. <laughs> Able to beat his defender on the far side. And at this point, it's just a foot race. Beat Swanson. Rather, I don't even believe that was Swanson. Extra point coming up for the Minutemen. We'll take it that we'll take a look at that replay after this extra point. Even McDaniel to hold. Extra point coming up for the Minutemen. To extend this lead is up, and it is no good, they say. The kick is no good. Veers to the left, but the Minutemen still have a three-point lead, 12 to nine, after the connection to Imad Canty. Imad Canty now with his second touchdown on the season, and it comes in a big one 
to give Elizabeth the lead for the first time tonight. Deep shot on the far side, has a man in stride, only one man to beat, this could go all the way, at the 10, at the 5, touchdown Elizabeth, in my Canty, and Enrique Fleming Canty gets his, first, his second touchdown on the season, his first one here tonight, still a three, uh, still a three point ball game, 12 to 9 in Bridgewater, it's going to get this ball back. We'll see how they respond. Sorensen deep to receive for the Panthers. Sorensen, the deepest man to return this one. Uh, here comes the kickoff. Lazo on Corks and some miscommunication on the return and trying to get positive yardage for this one. This ball comes out. Miniman said they have it, and they do deep inside of Panthers territory. On the return. So mis some, some miscommunication by Dane Swanson and La Cortando. And La Cortando coughs up the football. With 40 seconds left to go in this third quarter, the Minutemen are going to have great field position to retake this ball. Incredible. Talk about momentum shift for the Minutemen. Just got their first lead of the night on the last series, and here they are trying to extend this lead. They hand it off, and then a big hit coming from the linebacker position. Play Mendoza on the carry. Mendoza. That made by Joseph Lopertano. Mendoza getting his first carry tonight. In the gain of two on the play, second and eight. And they're gonna let this clock run out as we head to the money quarter, the fourth quarter. 12-9 in favor of the Minutemen after the deep shot to Mott Canty in the third quarter. We'll be right back here on more Sussex Sports coming up, fourth quarter. Come visit Angelina's Trotteria, located at 184 Columbia Turnpike, Florham Park, New Jersey. We are your neighborhood BYOB. Stop in and join us for lunch or dinner. Angelinos is proud to offer visitors the following specials. Tuesdays are two for two large pizzas for only $22. On Wednesdays, kids under 10 eat free. Thursday night is pasta night. All pastas on the menu are 20% off. Family serving friends can stop into Angelinos and let our family serve yours. I was born fast. Parisi made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. Back here on more Sussex Sports with me, Lloyd Wilson, as we enter the money quarter, the fourth quarter, here from Somerset, New Jersey. Elizabeth took the lead in the last quarter with a deep shot to Mott Canty. Here they are, trying to extend this drive. Almost tried to do another deep ball, but then sacked in the backfield is Fleming. Enrique Fleming. First one to get there. By Logan James. Logan James. Two on the play, second down. So Logan James getting his second sack of the season. To now make this a third and long, third and 12 to be exact, from the 30-yard line. We've seen deep shots from Fleming. We might see another one. Trips to the top of your screen, one man to the bottom. And maybe not seeing the play that he liked. Head coach Fiore. 
wants to talk it over, so he takes his first time out of the second half. In this broadcast, we'd also like to thank Bridgewater and Chevrolet, Kevin Yento Real Estate and Associates, Cuco Funeral and Cremation Services, Nissan of North Plainfield, Value Auto and Van Rental, Honda Bridgewater, North Point Bank, Five Star Orthodontics, and Zone Sports Academy. Talk about a game of momentum. At one point, it looked like Bridgewater had a chance to run away with it, scoring on their first series in the first half after not scoring a first half touchdown or even field goal in their last game last week against Phillipsburg. Then comes back in this game to score a touchdown on their first series, missing the extra point after a block extra point. And then the Minutemen able to score in that first half and then score in that third quarter after a deep shot. So Fleming with one touchdown on the ground and through the air. Fleming drops back. This one, a wide receiver screen caught by Smith. Smith is then tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Tackled by Joe Spira. Najee Smith slow to get up. So with that, the medical staff will come on the field to attend to him. And with that, we'll take a step off. We'll be right back here on more Sussex Sports. Is so cold, my fish froze. Mine's so hot, my sneakers melted. Rooms with different temperatures? That means your HVAC system is outdated and wasting energy. At ICS, we'll install an energy efficient system that provides a constant flow of clean, fresh air at the perfect temperature in every room. You could save money each month, and the price we quote is the price you'll pay. Get a quote today. See why we say ICS for HVAC. I see why. The green wave isn't just what we call ourselves. It represents all we are called to. Let's go! We strive for excellence in mind, body, and spirit. We put in the work in programs that test us, guide us to the colleges we pursue. We live true to putting others before ourselves, to the lifelong connections we've made. This is the spirit and strength we are called to. Roll wave. Step-by-step -step painting and general contracting. Your trusted partner for all your home needs. For over two decades, we've brought our clients' visions to life throughout Northern New Jersey. Our team of professionals and commitment to excellence deliver outstanding results. From painting, bathroom and kitchen renovations, additions, remodeling, and custom faux work, we've got you covered. Our team tackles projects of all sizes and complexities. Step-by-step -step painting, building dreams, one project at a time. Back here on Morris Sussex Sports as Smith was helped off the field. Empty set, fourth down coming up, trips to the top of your screen, two to the bottom. Fleming takes a snap, looks right, uncorks right, has a man, that one caught. Not able to get the first down and dragged down before the sticks, a yard short. Great defense and tackle by Swardson. McDaniels not able to get to the first down marker. It's a turnover on downs the second time tonight for the Minutemen. Great defense that time by the Panthers and Dane Swanson, the far side DB, able to make a play after the catch made by McDaniels. Panthers take over. Motion coming from Swanson, but Jack Bray takes it. Tackle from behind. Tackle from behind from Davin Davis. Only a gain of one. This one, hand off, Verano. Short gain, third and medium coming up. Frankie Verano, Still a whole lot of time left in this game. Third and six for the Panthers. Trips to the top of your screen. In the shotgun is Bray. Takes the snap. Looks left. Throws left. Rather over the middle. Has a man. It's Swarson. Hurdles over a man. Past the 45 at the 47-yard line. Dane Swarson. 
Another jailbreak screen works to proficient. That play good. Get those combos ready for a Panther first down. Sorensen now just continues to move the chains after a short gain by Verano. We've seen Dane Sorensen do it all night on the defensive end and the offense. But the offense, he has done a lot of great work with the slants and the Joe Brick screen. Gain of one from Verano. Trips to the top of your screen, one man to the bottom, bringing the shotgun. Looks left, has a man over the middle. That's Spira. Spira then loses the football, but believe his body was down when he lost it. So gain of That's four. To Joe Spira, stop made by Nerese McDougal. Gain of six on the play, third down. So they say gain of six, making this a third and three. Bray, pitch to the Verano on the right side, rather. That will be number 17 in Drew Davis. Drew Davis on the carry, stop me by Ezekiel Penick. A name we've only called three times tonight. He's in there at halfback. He got the first down. He's still out there. They pitch it now to the other side. Here's Drew Davis, the senior, cutting through tackles with a gain of seven. They said 17, Drew, what can you do? And he's able to make things happen on both sides. First pitch goes to the right side, and then to the second side, a gain of six. Davis still out there. The hard count doesn't work this time. Defense almost jumped in that D line, and a late flag comes in. Laundry on the field. Who is this one against? Both teams initially pointed at each other, but we're waiting for the officials word, they say false start. False start rule against the Panthers. So they make this a second and nine after the false start. Clock continues to run, 7.43 left to go in this game. Bray in the backfield. Bray looks left. Another screen. They get it to Verano on the far side. Verano able to juke out a man to get the first down just past the 35 yard line. They said he's able to get the first down in about two yards more. So he's at the 33 now. They need a nine. And they got 12. Handoff again to Verano. As the Panthers continue to just move this ball on the ground to have this clock moving. And maybe not want to give a lot of time to the Minutemen as they're trying to climb back in this game and retake this lead. Again, if you're just tuning in, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first lead that Elizabeth has had all game, and it came in the third quarter. This one, a delayed handoff, still fighting for extra yardage. Dane Swanson on the carry. Dane Swanson on the carry. Game three on the play. Third down. Third and manageable coming up. Third and three to be exact on the 15-yard line. They've had no problem running the football. Out there is Verano along with Spira. And Spira is in that quarterback position. We talked about how he's a Taysom Hill-like. Offensive line switching, and there's a flag. We'll see what the laundry is. We'll see if there's too many men moving. So illegal, rather offsides, will be called on the defense, and it's an automatic first down. That penalty result Already in red zone territory are the Panthers, and they're a first down away from having first and goal, but pretty much this is first and goal here. Jack Bray in the backfield, along with Verano. Read option, Bray takes it himself for a gain of about three. Jack Bray on the carry, set made by Kwame Williams. You see Drew Davis back out there for the Panthers, along with Bray. To the right is Davis. They pitch this one to Davis. Davis trying to find his blockers, using that burst of speed, and then just short 
of the end zone. Tackle made by the near side corner and McDougal. McDougal just saved a touchdown and on the back end of that play, Davis comes up hobbling. He trots his way back to the sideline. Verano now in the game to the left of Bray. Panthers with all the control in the world. They hand this one up to Verano. Verano right up the middle, untouched in for the Panthers, and the jungle goes crazy. Frankie Verano on the carry. Verano in for the touchdown, and the Panthers retake the lead. This offensive line, along with Joe Spiro, we see on that left side, on that right side, in untouched is Verano. Now awaiting the extra point. Extra point is up, it's high, and it is good. And now it is a 16-12 ball game here from Bridgewater Raritan High School. And the Panthers retake the lead. As for Ver Frankie Verano, he's able to officially get his first touchdown on the season. So Frankie Verano awarded with his first touchdown of the season, able to get into the end zone. And the Panthers retake the lead by four. By Kennedy, deep to receive for the minute then. So the senior able to find the end zone for the first time tonight and the first time this season. And it comes in a big way as they retake the lead with 5.17 left to go in this game. The deep man for the Minutemen and Ma Canty. The kick is off and well over the hand of Canty. And he takes this one at the five yard line. He picks it up, having space, changing direction, now going from right to left. No call for a block in the back. Canty continues to take this one past the 40, now to the 45, and just past the 45 at the 47 yard line. No call for a block in the back on the far side. I thought we might have seen some laundry. But Amad Canty takes this one from the five yard line to officially the 47. So a 42-yard return for Iman Canty. And usually coaches wouldn't want you to take it from the five-yard line. But hey, if you're able to change field position going from right to left, why not do it? Now here come the Minutemen. 5.06 left to go in this game. And then this defense for the Panthers has energy and tackle behind the line of scrimmage and gang tackle by multiple Panthers. <laughs> No gain on the carry from Lyles as he now heads to the sideline, hobbling. The replacement man coming in is Mendoza. Mendoza, who's been quiet tonight so far, only called his name a handful of times. Two to the bottom of your screen, two split out wide evenly, two to the bottom, two to the top, Mendoza to the left of Fleming. Takes a snap in the shotgun, looks right, throws right, has a man on the far side, that's McDaniels. McDaniels able to get the first down to two yards more. They needed 13 and they got 15. Continue to move the chains, an accurate placement in dots from Enrique Fleming. And ladies and gentlemen, this guy's only a freshman throwing over 1,000 yards. Mendoza to the left. Fleming takes the snap, looks right, uncorks, wanted to uncork, but he's gonna take this one and run for a minimal game, putting his head down, and a gain of four. Fleming wanted his guy on the far side, and that was Smith that was heading downfield in that slot position. Fleming didn't see an opportunity and decide to tuck in and run it. Second and six coming up for the Minutemen who trail in this game once again. Down four with 3.30 left to go in this game. Two split out wide. Motion man coming across, that's Smith. Takes a snap, looks right, throws right. This one in the air, anyone's ball caught but out of bounds. 
Ibn McDaniels on the far side. Great defense that time by the Panthers on the far side. That's Swanson, and his safety help on the back end was number three in Logan Creason. Creason. So third and six coming up for the Minutemen. Two split out wide evenly. Mendoza. Now goes to the left of Fleming. Motion man is Smith. They hand it off to Smith. Smith has room to run on this left side. Near side, stiff arming a man past the 30. And then just inside the 30, we'll see where they place his ball. Did he get the first down? He's able to extend it. So yes, he did get the first down and going out of bounds. That play good for a first down. They say he gets past the 30 to the 28 yard line. Mendoza now goes to the sideline. Lyles comes back in after trotting off. Clock did stop at 310. This one, hand off to Lyles. Lyles able to evade one man, but not able to evade the other Panthers in his face. That D-line stepping up. Chris Del Santro there along with Logan James. They say no gain on the play. No gain on the play, second down. Second and 10 coming up, same formation. One to the bottom and three to the top of your screen. In the pistol formation with Lyles behind Fleming. Fleming in the shotgun, claps his hand, takes a snap, looks right, throws over the middle, has a man, there's Daniels into the end zone. Ibn McDaniels beating his man in Swanson. Oh, this is just a great pass to McDaniels from the freshman in Fleming. Able to fool the defense with his eyes and then running past his defender is McDaniels. Second touchdown through the air for Fleming. And Elizabeth retakes the lead. Right now by two, awaiting the extra point coming from Lazo. The kick is up, and this one is through, and it's a three-point game. The kick is good with 2.31 remaining. Enrique Fleming, the freshman, with two passing touchdowns, three total on the day. Able to get one to Mark Canny in that third quarter to take the lead for the first time. And now to retake the lead, they go to Ibn McDaniels for the touchdown. And here come the Minutemen. So Fleming now with 11 touchdowns on the season as a freshman with six interceptions, two through the air, and one touchdown through the ground which he got for the first time this season. So now how will the Panthers respond? 2.30 left to go in this game. Both teams, rather the Panthers, have all their timeouts. And Minutemen with two. The kickoff, Swanson has the return this time. They fumbled on their last time. Just past the 30-yard line, maybe at the 31. So now things get interesting in the money quarter. This is where all the money is made and lost. So right now, for Elizabeth, Enrique Fleming, the freshman, three total touchdowns on the day, one on the ground and two through the air. And now here come Bridgewater Raritan trying to retake this lead with 2.30 left to go. Bray, wheel route, has a man. Swanson hit as he's caught. And this one past the 45-yard line at the 46. Dane Swanson. Able to beat his man on the wheel route. As it looks like Bridgewater's in the hurry up offense. We can see it here. The nearest man to guard that one is Isaiah DeRosa, but he's beat 
and the safety coming over too late, and Ezekiel Pinnock. Bray looks right, has a man, closest one to it is Swanson, but some miscommunication on that one as Bray threw through towards the sideline. Bray was going inside the defense. Clock does stop after the incomplete pass as we're just at two minutes, specifically at 2.01. Empty set for the Panthers. Trips to the top of your screen, two to the bottom. Empty set for Drack Bray. Trying to put on this fourth quarter comeback. Quick throw to the left side, and that's Spira. Spira able to evade the one man, twirling his way to the 45 yard line, making this a third and three. Seven on the play, third down. They put this at the 46 yard line. Empty set once again. Bray looks right. This one, he's going to step up in the pocket, has a man, and that's Woodridge. Woolridge able to spin off a man past the 30 yard line. Oh, what a move by Woodring. And a great heads up play by Jack Bray. Able to step up in the pocket, roll to his right, and then throw it to his open man and Colin Woodring. So the Panthers trying to put on a comeback. 134 left to go, and the timeout taken by the home team and the Panthers. This homecoming game is set up to be a good one going all the way down to the wire. Both quarterbacks have put on a great game. Drew Davis in the backfield along with Joe Spira trips to the top of your screen, one man to the bottom. Read option, Joe Spira has room to run, gets past the 20 yard line, inside the 20. Joe Spira on the carry, stop me by Isaiah. Panthers now in the red zone. Clock continues to move, Spira still out there, same formation. This one, another read option. Spiro takes it himself past the 20, rather than past the 15 yard line. 115 and counting. Both teams still have two timeouts. Five on the play, second down. 19 16 is your score. As timeout called by the defense, and they have one more timeout for the Minutemen. 19-16 in favor of the Minutemen, only holding a three-point lead. With 58 seconds left to go. So for the Panthers, touchdowns go to Verano, who is able to get his first rushing touchdown on the season. And then the other one goes to Swanson in that first quarter. So we'll see who gets the ball here with a minute under or one minute Left to go in this game, essentially, carry by Spira. So Spira on the carry. And he's a yard short from the first down marker. And for the Panthers, they're able to get the first down. One more first down before, before it being first and goal. First down. Jack Bray back out there. In the back with Verano. Verano gets the call. Verano able to evade one. He's able to avoid a multiple defenders into the end zone. Touchdown, Frankie. Frankie. 
Mikey Gerardo, two touchdowns in one game, his two touchdowns on the season, and this one to retake the lead in the final seconds of the fourth quarter. We see it here. He just bulldozes over the man on the D-line and then carries and bullies his way into the end zone. What a play by Frankie Verano. Pending the extra point. Kick is up and it's through. The kick is good. 28 seconds left to go in this game. 23-19 and the Panthers retake the lead in the fourth quarter. Frankie Verano, have a day, 5'9", 190 senior, two touchdowns on the season, two touchdowns in this game. Officially 28 seconds left to go in this game. And it's a touchdown or nothing for the Minutemen. Defense has to come up huge for the Panthers on their homecoming night, on this pink out night. The zoo has been electric and this student section, ladies and gentlemen, is stacked and packed. And if they're able to come away with this win, the zoo will go bananas. 28 seconds, the deep man is Ahmad Canny, who on the last time was in this position came away with a 41-yard return. The kickoff, Canty, tracks this one back, and this one goes past him and into the end zone for a touchback, and this drive will start from the 20-yard line. And let's see how this one shakes up. No time went off the clock, so we're still at 28 seconds. 28 seconds for the Minutemen with one timeout. And if you're head coach John Fiore, you're probably trying to take a few shots here, but a lot of the shots that you have to take have to go towards the sideline. A lot of cover two action will be in force for this Panthers defense just to keep things in bounce. And the most important thing, don't allow the deep ball. The deep man so far is Logan Creason in the back as they're playing three deep, essentially four. Trips to the top of your screen, one to the bottom, Fleming in the backfield. Drops back, looks, looks, on course. This one's a heave. Are you kidding me? Intercepted! Dane Swanson seals it! Rather, that one will be Tierney. Dylan Tierney seals it for the Panthers! And the arm from Fleming. He had the distance, but just a tad underthrown for his man in McDaniels. And to seal the game, Dylan Tierney. All right, let me hear some cabin. The junior. Let me hear some drums. So Dylan Tierney gets his first interception of the season, and it comes with a game sealer. Final score here from Bridgewater Road in high school, 23-19 in favor of the Panthers on their homecoming night. And with that, the countdown from the zoo and the win from the jungle. The second win of the season for Bridgewater. They now go to two and six, and it comes in a stellar one. Defense wins the game. Dylan Tierney on his first interception of the season. Seals it for the Panthers. And with that, that is the final here from Bridgewater Raritan High School. 23-19.
thank you for all for tuning in to another more Sussex Sports production with me, Lloyd Wilson, to all of our sponsors and to our production crew. We say good night from Somerset, New Jersey. Final score, 23-19 here from Bridgewater, Raritan High School. Thank you and have a good night. from the Panthers and a late hit coming from it looks to be Verano and Frankie Verano laid the absolute wood on McDaniels late flag coming just get back in maybe decent punt territory you don't want to just give it up right here Shot play, as we said, gliding over to the ball, and he's able to catch it. Running under Imad Canty. Behind Fleming. Fleming in the shotgun. Claps his hand, takes a snap, looks right, throws over the middle, has a man. There's Daniels into the end zone. Ibn McDaniels beating his man in Swanson.